Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate their consumers, grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series of spotlights on remarkable advisors from across the country. And joining me on this segment is LM Stamper, founder of LMStamper.com, affectionately known as Stamp. So Stamp, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Stamp, tell us a little bit about your work and specifically who are the types of folks that you like to serve? Sure, sure. So I am a financial planner in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, going on almost 11 years now. Uh, my primary markets that I work with are retirees and soon-to-be retirees and professional females. Uh, I, I take a pretty holistic approach uh, as it relates to financial planning. So we don't just look at investments, but we look at the entire picture. As you mentioned, it's serving you know retirees and soon-to-be retirees specifically, uh, female professionals. Do they have any specific uh, requirements or challenges that uh, that you find different than others? Yeah, you know that that's part of the reason why over time I I changed my specialty. You know, when I first started, I actually worked with dentists. Uh, so I worked with a lot of, uh, you know, dentists coming out of dental school. But as time went on, I started to gravitate towards working with female professionals, uh, particularly because, I, in my opinion, it's an underserved demographic. Uh, I think there's a lot of statistics out there that females will actually own um, over 50 percent of the wealth in this country. And when you're working with retirees, uh, you know, statistically, the, the male passes before the female. So. Uh, a lot of my clients who are, you know, over that 60-year-old mark, you know, when, when we plan, there's a good chance that, you know, me and and the female will be working, you know, in the latter years. So, and not to mention, I have a three-year-old daughter, and, you know, I want to make sure that, that she is financially savvy. I think that's something that's not only not taught to that demographic, but really just taught to people in general. Now, has this pandemic brought out anything new, any new focuses, or uh, really shined a spotlight on things? How has this affected your field in particular? Yeah, you know, Mark, I, in 2020, actually, you would have thought that, I, I can't speak for all planners across the country, but you would have thought that it would have been a down year uh, for financial planning, but kind of the opposite happened. You know, I would say, there was, it was a combination between some clients obviously needing to access accounts uh, because there's financial hardships, they couldn't get to work, et cetera, they were laid off, or the other half of people saying, wow, you know, this was a pretty big deal, so I need to pay attention to my finances. Uh, but I think the one thing that, uh, from a spotlight perspective, that the pandemic did was open people's eyes to liquidity, making sure they had access not only the funds that they could, you know, get you without penalty, but enough to kind of carry them through the storm, you know, whether that's, you know, six months or even a year's worth of living expenses. So I think for the most part, I think the let me go ahead and start planning ahead, um, that that narrative, you know, really came about in 2020. That brings to mind, have, have there been things, maybe myths or misconceptions that have kept people from you know, getting this, their financial houses in order before this? Are there any big myths or misconceptions that you find people hold? I think the most typically that I get is cost. I think lots of times people avoid working with a financial advisor because they think that there's going to be an excessive cost. Uh, and lots of times it's not. That, that's just not the case. Uh, not to mention that there's different planners that have different fee structures so depending on, you know, where you are at your stage in life financially, there's almost every, everyone, there's a planner out there for you, regardless of what your finances look like. But I think that's the biggest barrier. And then uh, I think sometimes folks get a little bit intimidated. Uh, you know, you turn on the news, you turn on, uh, you know, the, the, the stock channel, and there's all these graphs and all these big words, et cetera. I like to keep it simple. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, just save a percentage of your income. You're consistently doing it. You're diversifying where you're putting it. You're going to be fine. But yeah, I think, uh, I think the intimidation factor and costs are probably the biggest hurdles. And speaking of intimidation factor, uh, do people really wait until they're like soon to be retired to even get started? What, what have you found? Um, and, and when is the <laughs> right time to get started? Well, you know, I like to joke with folks and say, you know, we don't get serious, especially as guys, we don't get serious about our money until we're 30. 
you know, you, from age 20 to 30, most of the time, you're just, you're not really paying attention to it. But I think obviously when people are 50, 55, 60, and they kind of see that, you know, or that on the horizon of retirement, um, they say, okay, I really need to pay attention. But in my experience, I, you know, there's clients that'll start out in, in their mid twenties, you know, right out of college. Uh, but it, the, the, um, the idea that you have to pay attention to your finances definitely uh, ratchets up a little bit, you know, once you get past that 50, 55 mark, because you know, it's right around the corner. Stamp, what inspired you to, uh, to get into this field and help people with their finances? How'd you get started? Uh, well, I've always uh, loved business. I've always loved numbers. Uh, I actually have a real estate background. Um, I affectionately and, and, comedically say I was, I was recruited away and duped into this business <laughs> over 10 years ago, but it was the best thing that ever happened. Um, and I love teaching, you know, I, I love anytime there's a subject that, uh, you know, I feel I'm, a, you know, pretty well versed on. I love teaching that and sharing that with people. So I think my love for numbers and business and teaching is really what, what drew me to this, this industry. So what, um, if, if somebody was looking for an advisor to get started with, like, what should they look for in choosing an advisor to work with? What would you say? I, I would say first, somebody who listens. You know, a lot of advisors tend to do more talking than listening, and I think it's very important that you listen to your clients or your prospective clients and find out what's important to them, you know, what keeps them up at night. Um, and quite frankly, somebody who you like. You know, at the end of the day, if you start working with an advisor, hopefully, and more than likely, it's going to be a pretty long-term relationship. So there's no sense in, in working with somebody you don't feel comfortable with, somebody who you don't trust. You know, those are all extremely important aspects to it. Um, and then, you know, somebody, I think, who educates you or who at least is willing to educate you. You know, some clients love to, to you know, get into the nuts and bolts of things and others kind of like to keep it high level. But either way, I think that advisor should at least give you the opportunity to learn if you want. You mentioned earlier something about, you know, different advisors have different kind of wealth structures. And, you know, that is kind of a unknown factor for most people. Can you kind of shed a little bit of light on the, the, the pros and cons of, of different types of, uh, maybe just a broad overview on different types of uh, sure. fee structures? Sure, sure. So some, uh, some advisors will just charge you fee for service, which is kind of like going to a CPA or an attorney. You know, they sit down and say, hey, I'll, I'll outline what you should do and I'll just charge you a flat fee. Uh, secondarily, and probably the most common is assets under management. So as those advisors are managing those assets and, and moving them from here to there and rebalancing, et cetera, they charge a management fee that comes out of the assets. That's the most, probably the most common. And then others uh, are paid by the vendors that they work with. So in certain financial planning uh, scenarios, you're actually going to purchase a product. And lots of times when you do that, the company that you are working with will pay the advisor out of their pocket. So those are the structures that, you know, most people, again, I would say a large percentage of it is assets under management. But, you know, when there is a product that's needed uh, for the financial plan, then lots of times the company will pay that. But I'm not a big fee for service guy. I, I always tell folks that I cringe at the fact that you might have to just write out a check to me personally. I never want that. Uh, but whatever works for you works. You know, some people say, hey, I don't I don't need a long term relationship. I just need you know, quick fix. So tell me what to do and you know, I'll take that information and be on my way. Ah, that's terrific insight. I appreciate that. So Stamp, for folks mm -hmm. listening today that could use help in this area and would like to find you, how do they find you, connect with you and learn more? Sure, sure. Well, the easiest way is if you just Google LM Stamper, uh, that alone will pull up my website and Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, but if you go to lmstamper.com, obviously you can find me there. Uh, you can always call and text 817-846-3005. Stamp, I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing with my audience today. Uh, great insights, and thank you very much. I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. All righty. Thanks a bunch, Mark. I appreciate it. LM Stamper, founder of lmstamper.com. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate their consumers, grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for tuning in.